All right. Well, again, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is an event that, uh, you know, we used to do regularly, at least a couple times a year. And, and mostly we do it so much that it seems to resonate with a lot of people. It, it kind of, it's a kind of a different way of thinking about things and about how to go, you know, move forward with your trading and maybe uh, give you something to think about that you hadn't considered before. Before we go any further, the disclaimer says don't trade with money that you can't afford to lose. That most people do lose money at trading, and so that means you probably will too. And this edu uh, this presentation is for educational purposes only. We make no promises to you that you will be successful at day trading, okay? All right, so today we're going to talk about why two ticks is such a, a powerful concept, where to find those two ticks, and we're going to go over some trades that we took this week. We're going to show you a very simple trading system that anybody can trade. I'm going to uh, talk about the two tick challenge, and then we'll talk about some special offers. In fact, I got a number of emails uh, when after the uh, invitation went out uh, from people asking if we were going to have a special offer, they wanted to take advantage of the offer. So we we already sent it out to some people. But for those of you who are attending specifically just for the special offer, um, this is it to our store where you can take advantage of that special offer. Just enter the uh, the two ticks 20 off coupon code for any of these programs we had a number of people um, wanting to go ahead and get started and they were just waiting for us to have a special and so here it is all right now i'm gonna ask you guys to indulge me a little bit here please understand that a lot of us are stuck in our trading because we have particular assumptions and expectations about trading that we that we come into trading with all right so we come into these to trading with certain assumptions and expectations and those assumptions and expectations can give us a very narrow perspective of trading trading is something that we it's just what we can see and there, there's actually a lot more to it. Most of us come in and we've seen charts and we've seen people trade and we've watched videos, but it gives us a very narrow perspective. But I'm, what I have learned is that it takes a bit broader perspective to understand what it is that we're looking for. For example, if you look at this picture, it's just a Rubik's Cube on a piece of paper, right? And that seems pretty obvious right that's exactly what it is unless you change your perspective okay let's change and then the picture now becomes totally different than what we thought it was right it's just turning around the table well that's nothing like what we thought it was okay so changing our perspective both literally and figuratively, we can change what we see and believe, okay? So I'm going to ask you to keep an open mind, to be patient. Don't prejudge this, okay? And we're going to talk about some things that maybe you might be uncomfortable with at first. When uh, everything we're going to talk about today started when I was a struggling trader. Okay, and, and I think that I speak for a lot of you because I have been doing this for 13 years and I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot of you. And as it turns out, we all have the same emotions. We all make the same mistakes. We have all come into trading expecting it to be different than it ends up being. So when I was trading, every time I got into a trade, I was a, an emotional wreck. And even though I tried to convince myself not to be, I couldn't really change. Okay? 
So the reason I'm talking about this two ticks thing is because a long time ago, I learned that making money trend trading with a small account was next to impossible. You know, you might enter a trade based on whatever the rules of that trade is. And, you know, it's chugging along, maybe not really doing that great. You're hoping and wishing, and then it kind of starts to drop, and you start to get a little worried, and then it drops more, and you start getting angry, and you're wondering what to do. And then it goes in your favor, and you feel like the smartest person in the world. And, man, I'm going to ride this to the moon. And, of course, then the bottom drops out. And you're like, you get scared because you're like, well, I just had all this money a minute ago and now I've got no money left. In fact, I'm losing money. Maybe I should cut my losses and I should just get out, right? And then, of course, it goes to target, right? And you kick yourself for exiting when you should have, according to the rules of whatever system you're trading, you should have hung in there with it, but you decided you were scared or panicking, or whatever, and you exited. And of course, it always goes to target after that. So this was a very typical trading day for me. And it took me a long time to learn, a very long time to learn, that it is nearly impossible for those of us that are learning to trade that are trying to gain subtraction and we have and we have a small account and we're probably trading single contracts it is nearly impossible for single uh, contract or small lot traders to ride a trend from entry to target and not have emotions it is nearly impossible in fact statistics say you will not succeed at, and overcoming your emotions. I was always working at, you know, there's this mantra, trade like a machine, right? You've got to trade like a machine. And so you sit down and you go, I'm going to do it. I'm going to trade like a machine. I'm going to, I'm going to stick to the rules and by golly, I'm not going to get emotional. And of course you do, but you keep telling yourself not to. And uh, eventually maybe you try it and you can do it for a day or two. But you take a loss, and next thing you know, the emotions come flooding back in, and you're screwed, okay? So I realized this after seven years of struggling, and, and I realized that this is pointless. What, what can I do besides just quitting? What can I do? You know, I, I felt like such a failure. At first, I felt like a failure at managing my emotions, and then I felt like I was a failure at trading. So I started thinking, what if, how can I take emotions out of this, or at least reduce emotions? Because I realized that was my big problem. I couldn't hang in there. I couldn't manage my emotions. I couldn't ride the trend I was supposed to be riding. Um, the ups and downs were killing me. So one day I'm just thinking and I thought, you know, I'm watching charts and I see it move a couple of ticks. And I knew and I'm going, okay, well, it just hit this line of support or resistance and it's going to react to that line of support or resistance by at least a couple of ticks. Price is going to bounce off that line by a couple of ticks. And it does, and it would almost every time. So I started thinking, if I could be guaranteed, and I know there's no guarantees, but this is my this is the thought process I was going through. If I could guarantee a couple of ticks per day, what would be my income limiting factors? Hmm. So I guess if I was guaranteed a couple of ticks a day the size of my trading account and maybe how many days you could trade that would be my income limiting factors but you know what what does two ticks get you i mean is that pointless you know can i can i now maybe get a couple of donuts and some coffee 
with those two ticks. I mean, I'm certainly not going to support my family, maybe a Coke and a hot dog. I'm not going to be replacing the income. I'm not going to be, this isn't something that I can do as a profession at two ticks. Maybe, you know, these days, two ticks is a squirt of gasoline <laughs> in the gas can <laughs> and not much more than that. But the answer hit me like a ton of bricks. If I could consistently win two ticks a day, I will have done something that almost nobody can do. And that is to end the trading day as a winner. Okay? I was going to teach myself that I can be a winning trader because that was the that was one of my big problems. I had no idea if I could be a winning trader. I knew I wanted to be, but I had never proven to myself that I had any ability whatsoever to be a consistently winning trader. I would trade. I'd put on a trade and I would ch I would change in the middle of the trade what style of trading I was doing or what type of trade setup I was doing. I would I would make up things as I went along thinking I'm going to do this because I just know price is going to do this and I'm going to no well that you know so every time you do that you're you're creating a bigger problem for yourself. So I never had anything that I felt confident about. So I started thinking about this confidence thing and how if I could string together days of two ticks, right? That's where I started, two ticks. If I could string together some days, then I have built a foundation on which I can grow my trading career. So I worked at the two ticks for a while and ultimately um, I looked at it and, and uh, decided to take a few more ticks after time went on. Okay, after I got successful at that, I started a few more ticks and I had close to the same edge. You know, I, I found that somewhere around five ticks, um, I, I had a real good shot at being right about what I thought was going to happen next. Okay. After five ticks, things got a bit more speculative. So after doing some real quick and easy math and then deducting fees, I didn't see a huge money, right? This isn't, this isn't huge money. But what I did see was a solution to my problem, okay? I came into trading wanting to get rich. I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to live the life of luxury by just trading a couple hours a day and then playing golf or hanging out with my friends or hanging out with my family or going on vacations. I wanted that life, okay? That was the dream. I wanted that life. And that's what got me into trading. Well, ultimately, just before I quit trading, all I wanted was, can I just make a consistent income of some sort? And so I had to scale down my expectations. I had to scale down my goals and see if I could hit the smaller goals first and then turn that into something, you know, that I could uh, actually turn into a regular income, turn into a, uh, a, a career. OK, so the longer we're in a trade, the more speculative that trade becomes, right? You guys have sat and you've watched the markets. They're just cruising along. Everything's going good. And suddenly we get like three giant bars in a row. Price just takes off. And you maybe that's good for you maybe it whips you out but something happens there now the longer you're in the markets the more speculative the trade that you're in becomes now 
these big boys, these market makers, these manipulators that are doing this, do you think they want you to stay in the markets for a long time or do you think they want you in and out really fast? I mean, they don't have the opportunity to take your money if you're in and out really fast, do they? They want you to stay in the markets a long time. They want you to be a trend follower. They want you to go for 20, 50 ticks. Absolutely, because the longer you're in there, they're going to get you. All right? Now, remember, I asked you guys, indulge me. I got a little story here. Okay? There's, there is a point to this. Don't get bored. Don't leave. Okay? Got a little story to help me illustrate something that's going to help you better understand where I'm coming from. Okay? So I had this. We used to live in, uh, in League City, Texas, just outside of Houston, uh, right near NASA. Lived in a townhouse. Got the, lived, uh, across the street from me is this old guy named Bill. Bill was, I was in my 30s then, early 30s. Bill was in his mid to late 70s. Super nice guy. He walked across the street one day when he saw that I was putting some golf clubs in my uh, trunk of my car. And I had, my wife ran an advertising business and she bartered with a uh, company. I had the best golf clubs. I had a alligator skin bag. I had the shoes and the clothes and the... I had it all, man. I looked like a pro. So I put all this stuff. Of course, I was, uh, you know, I was young. I worked out. I was strong, you know. And so Bill comes up, shuffling across the street, says, hey, uh, uh, how about we go play golf together someday? And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but he was serious. And he said, no, I'll take you golfing. I, uh, let's go to next week. And I said, okay, so. Anyway, we made a plan to go uh, play golf the following weekend. Bill took me to this um, municipal course that there was more weeds than grass, um, but that's where he played. And I thought, oh, man, all right, well, I'll just make this old guy happy, and, you know, I'll try to play around for a while. And anyway, so we got to the uh, first tee. Oh, wait, I didn't tell you the rusty clubs part. So Bill gets in my car that, that weekend, and he's got three golf clubs. Three golf clubs that he got at a garage sale. No bag, no golf shoes, just three rusty old golf clubs. I'm like, oh, no, I thought he was a golfer. I didn't know he was going to. So anyway, I've got this preconceived notion of what Bill was going to do with these three crappy old golf clubs. So we get up on the first tee, and, you know, I, like I said, I'm working out. I'm in my early 30s. I've been going to the driving range, and uh, I get up there, and I absolutely crush my drive. I mean, I unload on it with everything I had, and it went two fairways over <laughs> into the trees. Man, I hooked the thing like crazy. And Bill's a super nice guy. He's like, oh, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm over there looking for my golf ball. And so in the meantime, Bill decides to go, and, and he steps up, and he just hits it about 70 yards down the fairway. I'm still looking for my golf ball. I, uh, Bill goes ahead and takes his next shot, another 70 yards straight. Just a, just a little chip shot with his go rusty golf club. I'm in there swinging and, and cussing, and this is the first first uh, hole, right? I'm hitting the ball all over the place. But in the meantime, Bill's taking these short, straight shots, short and straight, just short, easy, straight, and I'm all over the golf course. But, man, I'm hitting it hard. I'm, I'm doing what I've seen other golfers do on TV, right? I'm doing what golf is to me. I've, I've read the books. I've watched the videos. I've done everything that I've seen on what golf is to me and what real golfers do. So Bill drains it in four. He gets a par. I get a 10 or something like that. 
And I thought, well, he was lucky. Well, no, the whole day went like that. That was the whole day. So what do you think I learned from Bill? Well, like I said, early 30s, working out. I didn't learn anything. All I learned was I was a terrible golfer. You know, I've seen it on TV. I've read the books and the read it back then. It was VCR tapes. So from my own personal observations, I know I just need to do what the pros do. That's how to be good at golf, right? No. So I learned nothing initially. But ultimately, I learned to get good at doing something simple. Bill didn't need all those clubs. He was smart. He knew that he needed to hit a ball straight 70 yards, and that's it. You don't have to be fancy to be good. Rusty old golf clubs were perfectly fine. Didn't need the alligator skin bag or the $300 shoes or any of that. Hitting it straight is a lot better than than using, uh, you know, hitting it long. Straight is always better. I'd hit it long three fairways over and be 400 yards with the roll and everything. And he'd hit it 70 yards but straight. But a nice straight shot. Don't try to do what the pros do. They, you don't do, you don't practice like the pros practice. You don't do what pros do. Consistency is better than the potential big gain. I wanted to drive that ball right up by the green, but I didn't have the skill to do that. I had done it before, so that meant, well, I can probably do it again. I hope it happens this time. Bill never even tried that. He just 70 yards straight ahead. So like I said, you know, the potential big gain of, of driving it up there and landing it next to the green also had a potential big gain that I was going to be two fairways over in, a, uh, in the water somewhere. And boy, was I overcomplicating it. He didn't practice. He didn't go to the driving range. He didn't do anything. He learned one thing. And he ended up par that day, by the way. And <laughs> I, when I see this patience wins the game, he was so patient with me. I was everywhere. I, he was waiting, and he was fine. He was okay. He didn't mind. He was a great guy. And it's more about what's in your head than what's in your hands. So how do we relate this to Two Takes to Paradise? Start with the basics of a simple system. And I'm going to show you a simple system here in just a minute. Okay. When two ticks net for the trading system, for the trading session, that's it. Two ticks. Get ahead two ticks and quit. You can quit trading with real money and then, or is SIM, uh, you could, you could set up two different SIM accounts. You could SIM, you could call one SIM live and call one SIM SIM. This is something that we teach uh, in our mentoring thing. But set up two different SIM accounts. Call one SIM live, one SIM SIM. SIM live will simulate all your live trades. Okay. The goal is to see how many consecutive days you can end the trading session as a winning trader. You will be surprised what that does for your confidence. By ending a day, you, you, maybe it was two ticks. You go, well, two ticks is nothing. But if you string together three, four, five, six days of two ticks winner, tell me, send me an email back on how that changes how you feel for the rest of the day. How you feel when you sit down to start trading each day. Do you sit down nervous? with your heart racing and your palms sweating with a lot of hope that today's a better day? Or do you sit down with more confidence that today's going to be like yesterday and the day before and the day before? Okay. So when you hit your goals and whatever those goals are, 
Now, instead of two ticks, go for three ticks. Okay, and repeat. Okay, and just keep doing that. And build. And eventually, you'll have a losing day. Right? We all do. You're going to have a losing day. And then you start the process over again. You cannot trade successfully without um, confidence. As your confidence grows, you can increase the number of contracts that you trade and keep doing the same thing. Don't get good at 100 different things. Another quick story. I had 12 monitors at one point trying to place a single winning trade. I had all of the information, and I still couldn't place a, uh, a uh, winning trade very often. I was a losing trader. I've got it down to two now, charts on one screen, Superdome's on the other screen, and I've been trading uh, professionally for 13 years now, and that's all I have. That's all I use. What the charts that we show in the trade room is all I use. So couple of ticks where do we find these couple of ticks that's that's where I wasn't exactly sure but I had an idea okay so for years I felt like trading was all about numbers and if you apply enough math you can figure it out okay it wasn't until much later that I learned that Actually, that's a faulty assumption. One of many faulty assumptions that we all come into trading with. Trading beating about numbers is a faulty assumption. If you're good at numbers, you'll be good at trading is a faulty assumption. Okay? That is not true. And in fact, in my experience now, in the 13 years that I've been doing this professionally, I have learned that those people who are number based generally struggle a bit more than the people who come in that have more of an artistic background. Okay. Now, there's no doubt that there are a lot of numbers in trading and a lot of math has been used to try to predict what those numbers will be in the future. So we can all agree that trading involves lots and lots of algorithms, right? But why? Why does it take these algorithms to try to figure out what might happen in the markets and how you can find an edge? Okay. There are a lot, a lot of influences in the markets that cause the markets to do certain things or to have certain conditions present in them. And then, so there's a lot of influences. Now, if you combine them different ways, there's just an unimaginable number of combinations of influences of the markets that make the markets do what they do. It's kind of like trying to figure out what's going on out in the universe. We don't have the ability to measure everything. So we use algorithms to try to tell us what's going on out there. You know, we use math. We, we use physics. We, that's what we use to try to figure out what's going on out there. Well, when you try to take a group of people and you try to figure out their thoughts, feelings, and emotions, as a group, that is like trying to figure out the universe, right? How many, if you took a group of people and you each one of these people is having thoughts, feelings, and emotions. So even in just the group, you're going to have a, a bunch of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. But now, how can I predict what this group is going to do based on their combination of thoughts, feel, feelings, and emotions. How many combinations do you su suppose there are of thoughts, feelings, and emotions on a group like this? 
probably millions. Well, how am I supposed to know anything? How am I supposed to do anything if there are millions of combinations of things that could happen based on thoughts, feelings, and emotions? That, that, that was a sobering thought for me. How am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to take two or three indicators, four or five maybe, and predict what's likely to happen next? Or, or coming soon. That was overwhelming. So then I started thinking, well, what if I picked some sudden and unexpected event like this group of people here who they were not expecting this broken bat to come flying at their heads. Suddenly now, how many thoughts, feelings, and emotions or combination of thoughts, feelings, and emotions do you think these people are having? Not that many. You know, they're probably not thinking about paying their bills or, or you know, work or all, all the other things that we have going on in our minds or making money or losing money or fear, or panic, or greed or any of those things. They're not thinking about any of that. They're, they're mainly thinking of fear of injury and protect themselves from harm. And that's it. That's it. I can tell you what's going to happen after this, though. I haven't seen a video of this, but I know exactly what's going to happen after this. And that's an edge, right? So what do we want? We want algorithms or do we want to do people watching? Because to me, people watching, I can figure out. I'm much better at people watching. So I started thinking about this when, and I started thinking, okay, so I'm looking at this trading chart and I go, okay, there are some very obvious places where for no particular reason that I can see here on the charts, Price stops and changes directions. So I'm I want to find points on the chart where this happens. The, so price is reacting to something. People are having feelings and thoughts and emotions that cause price to do something. And it changes direction. So that's that was now my mission. How can I pick up? when this is happening and i had this aha okay this this uh was one of my first ahas which opened the door for a lot of other ahas for me in fact we have our little sessions where i talk about these ahas um that opened a lot of doors for me that i that were closed again because i didn't have a very good perspective on trading so now I'm, I'm, I'm opening up my perspective and I think rather than trying to anticipate what a large crowd is going to do over a long time frame, can I anticipate what a crowd will do immediately after a sudden and unexpected event? That was the key. Because there are very few thoughts, feelings, and emotions for me to try to interpret to figure out what's going to happen next. So when you see this, when you're looking at this, trying to decide what to do, I see a crowd that is reacting to a stimulus in a predictable way, and I know what they're likely to do next. Anybody know What's likely to happen next here after the bat is, is no longer posing a danger? What are these people going to do? I know what they're going to do. You know what they're going to do. They've already ducked. The ducking is over. The, 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 the event has passed. What do they all have in common right now? What are they doing just before? The event has passed. They're all holding their hands up to protect themselves. 
So I have a piece of information now. They're all holding their hands up. And if somebody said to me, I'll give you $100 if you could tell me what happens right after this. I'm going to say they're all going to put their hands down. There's a there's an edge right there. That's an edge. I know what's going to happen next. Their hands are up to protect themselves. They're reacting to a stimulus. And I know what's going to happen next. They're going to put their hands down. And that's what this looks like on our charts. This is uh, the markets acting in a predictable way doing something sudden and unexpected, and then us reacting to that. Richard Wyckoff, maybe many of you know of him, was a very successful trader in the early 1900s, and he was very curious about identifying underlying trends or logic behind market action and conditions. And he was a real student and ultimately a real teacher of trading back in his day. Very successful guy. The study of responses, he says, is an almost unerring guide to the technical position of the market. That's exactly what we're doing. We're not predicting. That's not what we do. We're not trying to predict what's going to happen. We wait for certain conditions to exist because we know how people are going to respond. And that's our edge. All right. So, for example, here's a just a chart. I don't know when this was. This was last couple weeks ago. So we got price kind of channeling and we start to build some momentum. Okay, so we have some upward momentum building here. Then we have a strong burst of energy to the point where people are going, oh, look at price go. Oh, my gosh. So this burst of energy is people jumping in with these momentum traders that created this. These are the, the HFTs, the, the, the market makers. These momentum traders created this because they like to buy low or, or buy high. You know, we're up here, we're high, and sell higher. Okay, so they created this. And now all of you guys that are FOMO uh, uh, traders will be jumping into this. Right about the time exhaustion sets in, okay? So we're looking at exhaustion because price can't move in one direction for an extended period of time. It just can't. There are going to be sellers waiting up here. There's going to be divergence where momentum has has already changed directions. Um, there's going to be another piece of the market manipulators dumping all their contracts on the market and flooding the market so that... Uh, um, uh, the, the supply overwhelms the demand, which drives down the price, which starts the whole cycle again. So this is a very strong edge. This is people reacting in an expected way. And this gives us a high probability trade setup. This is one of our trade setups right here. This is price moving out of a channel. It bursts up. It gets overbought. That's this pink outline. We have our speed tick indicator, which tells us that the orders that came into this bar are coming in much faster than is typical for us little retail traders. It has to be some sort of a manipulation by some sort of a computer-generated trade or trades. Okay? Then we have our pullback alert that says price is, is churning and this is an up thrust exhaustion bar, okay? Or a blow off bar, like one of our traders likes to call it. Then at the open of this bar, we've got a div uh, divergence. This is our rock star indicator. We'll talk about this again in a few minutes. 
this rock star indicator tells us with all of these conditions at the open of this bar we need to short it okay this is our bread and butter this is what we do every day this is people putting their hands down after a sudden and unexpected event this and then this is predictable we can anticipate this as long as we have the right conditions okay so this was the when i said you need to start this two ticks thing you need to start it with the basics of a simple system and we have a very simple system in fact if you look on our youtube channel and you go to the playlist called trade of the day you'll watch trades that we traded last week and you'll see trades that we traded many years ago and they look exactly the same over and over and over and over that's what we do every day over and over and over again let me show you some of those trades let me let me pull up a video here I'm going to actually show you. We're going to do it fast. These are trades from this week. Right? I didn't. I didn't. I just went real quick um, uh, this morning and just grabbed some trades that we took this week. And you'll see the same thing over and over and over again. Look. So, price is pushing up. We get these big bars, bigger than these previous bars, right? These big bars are shooting straight up. We've got that speed tick I told you about. We've got the pullback alert. So this is this is now telling us be ready. There's a chance that we're going to have a trade. We have resistance here. This bar open under that resistance, and we have divergence, which is this rock star. So we shorted it here. Now potentially shorted it up here because price backed up a little bit and down it goes okay so here's another one price pushing up gets overbought now it did back up we do have that freight training effect so it backed up some we talk about freight training again uh next week we have uh, some events next week and you um I'll have a sign up for you for that in just a minute. All right. Watch. Same thing. Price is pushing up now. This has been pushing up a while. This, see these black bars? And then they turn uh, a lighter gray and a lighter gray and a lighter gray. This is telling us that this momentum has been going on for quite a while and and exhaustion is imminent it's coming in now we get this this big bar with uh, a speed tick and then a rock star there's our and, and that rock star is because we have divergence meaning that even though price is on an upward trend momentum is already shifting directions and when that happens price almost always wants to follow momentum now remember we're not trading for a lot of ticks we only need this we only need five okay this isn't very many ticks uh or this is actually more than it looks because of the scale of the charts um price moved a long way in a short period of time so the ch charts have zoomed down so this is actually more than it looks like this is about seven or eight ticks right here so this is our winning trade right here and that's all we need there's another one notice when the um, indicators print on the open of the bar and then price jumps notice that where the indicators printed okay they print on the current bar there's no repainting the only thing that repaints is momentum and that's because of the way momentum works works there's our rock star we got a little bit of a of some freight training but then it pulled back and hit our target these are all trades we took this week
All right, and I could just do this all day. Uh, we took a lot of trades this week. On average, five to seven trades uh, per morning session. Okay, so you get the idea. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. We don't have a whole bunch of different types of setups. It's the same thing over and over and over again. To the point where our trading can get kind of boring because there's nothing to analyze. There's nothing to uh, um, try to predict. We don't have crystal balls. We just wait. We talk about, uh, uh, in the trade room, we talk about waiting for the bus. And it's really just like that. There's nothing to do but wait for the conditions to show up. And basically, when it shows up, you get, up and you get on the bus. And that's how, that's how we trade. So big money is doing this. Uh, a lot of these manipulations, you know, they've studied our responses and they create these events to cause us to respond. They don't wait. They have the ability to create these events. These are the market makers. These are the guys with the supercomputers inside the exchanges, the, the HFTs, the momentum traders. Remember, the study of responses is an almost unerring guide to the technical position of the market. They don't wait for us to respond to the things. They create conditions so they know how we're going to respond so they have an edge. They, and they do it to us all day, every day. So this is the basic market structure of a manipulation. You know, you've got your areas of accumulation, your areas of distribution. You've got the markups between them. So I look at this and I'm like, well, where's my opportunity? And the opportunity is after these, these uh, sudden and unexpected breakouts from a channel, right? So here's this channel. And it broke out and it's going to pull back. And oftentimes it's going to go into another channel, break out and pull back. Another channel, break out. And then eventually the big markdown is going to happen. Okay. This is, this happens all the time. It's very predictable if you know what to look for. So we created our indicators and then we combined several of them into a single indicator to help us understand what's about to happen. Now, these indicators on the left here, we use in the trade room to help us prepare for a potential setup. Okay? So you can't just use the rock star this you put all of this in to this rock star here or these things um, and it creates a rock star which is the trigger to get into a trade so this would be a trigger for a short here if all of the right conditions exist so i want to i want you to take that two tick challenge though and you can do that now i mean if you have the ability to Watch charts. If you've been watching charts for a long time and you and you believe you have the ability to understand when price is likely to go one or two ticks in your favor, try the two tick challenge. Okay, that's two ticks. That's this. This is it. That's it. That's all there is. Two tick. For those of you that don't know, a tick is the minimum incremental movement of price. Okay, that's a tick. So if you could just go two ticks. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to trade for a two tick winner. You're going to stop trading live or sim live. This, this one thing, this very simple concept I've been talking to you about today has gotten probably more of our traders involved with 
our trading style than anything else we've done in our 13 years. Because they found that this two tick thing absolutely changed things for them, turned things around. This has been a, a big deal for a lot of our traders to start gaining some traction, start feeling confident that, hey, you know what? I was about to quit, but now I've proven to myself that I can be a winning trader. Now let's build on that. So you stop trading in your live SIM account or live account. You practice more in your SIM SIM account. You record how many successive days you're able to do it, or maybe you want to record how many days in a month uh, you're able to do it. You increase the lots traded, and you keep doing the same things over and over and over, and you don't have to keep doing longer and longer trades. You don't have to try different things. You just get good at one simple thing. You be like Bill. You use a rusty old golf club and you hit it straight 70 yards. All right, so for those of you that have been uh, contacting me this week about the special offers, we have a, a new thing on our uh, website also. This is brand new where you can uh, spread out the payments. There is a, a fee for that, but if you'd rather do this uh, instead of one single payment, if you want to spread it out, um, you'll end up paying a little bit more, but uh, you can spread them out uh, over a few months.